Amen. Mark chapter number 11. Okay, let's do our smile next side. Turn to your person to your left, to your right. Show them your 32s, your 22s, your 2s, your 12, 12 2s, whatever you got left. Amen. Let's hold our Bibles up and let's do our confession. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. Come on, say it like you mean it. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am, I am what, it says I am. what it says I am. I can do, I can do. what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. I am a believer and not a doubter. I am a doer, not just a hero. I believe the word from Genesis through Revelation. So let God be true and every man, a woman, a liar, in Jesus' name. Amen. Mark 11, 20. Let's start at verse Number 20, now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the root. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, teacher, look, the fig tree which you curse has withered away. Mm. So Jesus answered and said to him, have faith in God, or have the faith of God, or have the God kind of faith. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea. And does not doubt in his heart, but believe those things he said would be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever thing you ask when you pray, believe you receive them, and you will what, family? We're talking about the, uh, uh, the prayer petition, the earnest kind of prayer, but I want to talk to you about faith. I told you last week, the greatest part of any building, any house, any life is the foundation. Yeah. See? The church needs a foundation. And the Bible says, without faith, you can't please God. But I want you to look at verse number 22. So Jesus answered and said to them, he said, first of all, you got to have what? Faith in what? In God. Or you got to have the God kind of faith. See? Or you got to have the faith of God. What is he saying? We're talking about the, faith, the, 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 the prayer petition. He's saying for God to do something strong and mighty in your life, you're going to have to have the God kind of faith or the faith of God. And then I'm teaching you what the God kind of faith is. See, because a lot of times people say, well, you know, I'm not Jesus. I'm not God. No, you're not. But you better have the God kind of faith to receive. Amen. See, and that's what he's saying. That's why he looked at them because they looked at that fig tree and said, Master, they remember that he cursed it from the root. And I was studying that yesterday, and, and something just jumped in my spirit. God said, watch this here. He said, the things that I bless can't no man curse. But when God cursed something, he finished with something. You might as well be finished with it. See? But for you to be successful in your prayer walk, you're going to have to have the faith of God or the God kind of faith. So we start teaching on it. We start, I start giving you things. We say you must know that God wants to answer your prayers. You must decide what you want and find the scripture that promises it. Watch this here, family. You must ask the Father and believe that you receive them. You must control your thought life in agreement with what you believe. You must develop a faith confession in agreement with what you believe. You must avoid every person that's not in agreement and will attack your faith. You must think and see yourself with the promise of God. You got to think constantly of the goodness of God. Go to Hebrews chapter number 10. Hebrews chapter number what? Ten. We said you got to have, you got to hold a steady course of faith. You got to hold a steady course of faith. Hebrews chapter number 10, verse 35. Hebrews 10, 35. If you're there, say amen. amen. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence. Why? Which has great reward. See, your confidence, we talked about last week, it carries with it a great reward. And we said confidence is a bold, courageous expectation, grounded in proven reliability. Go to James chapter number one, Hebrews, James, the next book. We said successfully holding your course is a never a matter of inspiration, but always a product of accurate information. Because the devil, when you pray, remember we just read it in Mark eleven twenty three. He said, when you pray, believe you receive it, and you shall have it as in the future. So when you believe in God for something, the devil going to try to get you to doubt, to speak against it. See, to turn your back on God. 
but you've got to have confidence. And let me tell you something, family. Let me read this again, because he's saying successfully holding your course is never a matter of inspiration, but always a product of accurate information. There's nothing more accurate than the word of God. Amen. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Everybody look at me. When God speaks to you, you excited. Have God spoken to anybody in here? You get all excited. See? And then you run out and you start telling everybody like Joseph did. You start telling everybody, God just spoke to you. Who, if God speak to you, have you ever seen somebody hit the lottery for $100 million and not get excited? You just heard the voice of God, so you, that's inspiring. You get excited. But watch this here. That's going to wear off. Because God ain't talking about now. God could be talking about 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now. How many of y'all been waiting on some stuff longer than 90 days? Amen. How many of y'all been waiting on some stuff longer than three years? Amen. See, inspiration are wear off. And you go back and say, God, that was you, right? I've been waiting 17 years. Moses waited 80 years. We read last week, Caleb waited 40 years. See, what? Let me tell you something. Holding, successful holding your course is not a matter of inspiration, but always a product of accurate information. This is accurate information right here. It's going to come to pass, baby, but you're going to have to hold your course because inspiration going to wear off over time. And then all of a sudden you give up, and now you make God look like he's a liar. He's not a liar. You just didn't hold your course. See, if we read... Go back to Hebrews chapter 10. Watch this here. Go back to Hebrews chapter 10. Well, don't worry about it. Stay in James 1. We'll go back to Hebrews in a few seconds. I'm in James chapter number 1, verse number 2. If you're there, say amen. amen. My brethren, my sister, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, temptations, tests, knowing that the testing of your faith. See that? Your faith going to be tested. Knowing, knowing, confidence comes from what you know. Knowing, watch this here. Knowing that the test in your faith produces really the word endurance or perseverance. But let endurance, let perseverance have this perfect work that you may be perfect or mature, complete, and lacking nothing. But if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and will be given to him. But let him ask in. But let him ask in Faith. with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. Let not that man, let not that woman suppose he's going to receive anything from the Lord. For he or she is a double-minded man, unstable in all this way. Let me tell you something, family. Every time you pray, God hear you. But there's a process you're going to have to go through to receive it. See, and you're going to have to hold your course. And see, a lot of us, see, that's why the Bible said, watch this here. We walk by and not by. See, he said, we walk by faith. We don't go by how we feel. Do you believe it's going to come to pass? I know it's going to come to pass. God said it. See, God said it. And then we start talking about, watch this here. We talked about five things, why things take time. Number one, developing my faith. Number two, divine alignment must be achieved. Number three, disobedience of others. I help come through others. Number four, the natural order of things. And number five, satanic interference. Now go to Ephesians chapter number six, and I'm going to get into the new lesson today. Ephesians chapter number six. You've got to consume your thoughts with God promised to deliver. You've got to consume your thought life with, with God's promise to deliver. Now, family, listen to me. I'm going to go deep today. Now listen, I'm going to go off. <laughs> Y'all know when I'm talking about go off. I ain't talking about crazy, but I'm going to go off. Because you need to hear what I'm going to teach you today. You got to consume your thought life with God promises to deliver. Ephesians chapter number what? Six. Six. Now watch this here. Number one, I'm going to give you five things to help you consume your thought life with uh, promise to deliver. Number one, don't be moved by unsubstantiated prophecies. Don't be moved by unsubstantiated prophecies. And let me give you a definition of unsubstantiated. 
when you uns when some is uh, unsubstantiated mean lacking substance, firmness, or strength. Now Ephesians chapter number six, if you're there, look at verse number ten. He said, "Finally, my brother, be strong in who, and in the power of what, his might." See, he said, "Finally." The end of the matter, be strong in the what? Lord. Lord, and in the power of what? Now, what is he saying? We're saying don't be moved by unsubstantiated prophecy. See, let me tell you something, family. He said you got to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. What is he saying? He's saying a lot of us believe people over God. See, in other words, we said the word unsubstantiated means it don't have no substance. It don't have no firmness to it. It don't have any strength. Now, I tell you something God told me, and then you, you come back to me and say, that can never happen. Now, who am I going to believe? He just told us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. See? So a lot of time, you got a lot of, we, God tell us something, and then we tell other people, and then they shoot us down. Now, he told us in verse 10, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against uh, the wiles or the schemes of the devil. For us, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, Take up the whole lump of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day and having done all to stand, do what, family? Amen. Therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all things, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you'll be able to quench all the fiery dust of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit which is the word of God, praying with all prayers, with, uh, praying with all prayers, with all supplication in the spirit. Number one is, don't be moved by unsubstantiated prophecy. Don't be moved by something that don't have no substance to it. That's what it means, unsub. It don't have no substance to it. If God don't say it, it don't have no substance. It don't have any strength. Now, who you going to believe? See, who you going to believe? See? He said, finally, be strong in the Lord. Watch this here. In the power of his might. You ain't strong enough to bring it to pass. Amen. So when you, that's why you asking God. Remember, when you pray, believe, you receive it. Because you know you can't do it. So you understand it's going to take the supernatural to make it happen. So you, but you got to understand there's a supernatural enemy fighting against you. To stop it from coming to pass. So a lot of times, see, so a lot of times, like when God spoke fresh start, new beginning to me, and God spoke to you, a lot of people said, that ain't going to come to pass. Why? See, why you, why you feel they going to come to pass? See, that's unsubstantiated prophecy. It don't have no, your, your prophecy don't have no substitute. You didn't hear what God told me. Amen. And you can't bring to pass what God told me. Amen. See, number two, put number two up there. Number two, God's long-suffering is not to be confused with his inability. God's long-suffering is not to be confused with his what? Inability. Go to Genesis chapter number 18. See, you think because it takes too long, God can't do it. That's a good one right there, family. God's long-suffering is not to be confused with his inability. See, remember I told you, God talks funny. Amen. See, God calls things that be not as though they were. So when God told Abraham, he and him and Sarah was going to have a baby. See, Abraham was 75 years old. Sarah was 65. Abraham was 99 and a half, almost 100 years old, and Sarah was 90 when God brought to pass 25 years later. So God's long suffering is not to be confused with his inability to bring it to pass. So when we look in Genesis chapter number what? Genesis chapter number 18. Watch this here, family. Watch this here. Genesis chapter number 18. If you're there, say amen. 
Let's pick it up. <laughs> Genesis chapter number 18. I want to pick it up. <laughs> Let's pick it up in verse number 9. I'm in Genesis 18, 9. If you're there, say amen. amen. Now watch this here. He said, then they said to him, where is Sarah, your wife? So he said, here in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of what, family? Life, which is what? Nine months. Behold, Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Sarah was listening in the tent, which was behind him. Now, Abraham and Sarah were what? Oh, well advanced in age. And Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I have grown old, shall I pleasure my Lord being old also? And the Lord said to Abraham, Why does Sarah laugh, saying, surely, <coughs> saying, Shall I surely bear a child since I am old? Verse 14. Is there anything, come on family, too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, which is nine months later, watch this here. At the appointed time, I return to you according to the time of what? So God's long suffering is not to be confused with his inability to perform. Go to Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter number 17. So God's long suffering is not to be confused with his, with his inability to bring the promise to pass. Genesis chapter 17, if you're there, say amen. Then God said to Abraham, who's talking to Abraham? As for Sarah, your wife, you should not call her Sarah, but Sarah should be her name. And I will bless her and also give you a son by her. Then I will bless her and she should be a mother of nation. Kings of people should come from her. Now this girl ain't got a baby. Watch here. Then Abraham fell on his face and did what? Laughed. Come on, I'm in Genesis 17, 17. Y'all there? And Abraham fell on, fell on his faith and did what? Now everybody look at me. Abraham is the father of what? Faith. Abraham is the father of what? But he laughed. See, if Abraham can laugh, you can laugh. But God is just as serious as he can be. Watch this here, verse 17. Look at it. And Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born to a man who is what? 100 years old. And shall Sarah, who is 90 years old, bear a child? And Abram said to God, Oh, that Ishmael may what? Live before you. And God said what? No. Now look at me, family. Abraham, God spoke to Abraham when he was what? 75 years old. Now, 25 years later, God said the promise is getting ready to come to pass. So God's long suffering is not to be confused with his inability to bring the promise to pass. Now, 25 years later, God said next year this time, Sarah is going to have the baby. The Bible said Abraham laughed within himself. So Abraham goes to God and said, God, won't you do it through Ishmael? Ishmael is a baby that they just had 14 years earlier. Because why? Sarah got tired of waiting and said, it can never happen through me. See, so uh, Abraham, Sarah told Abraham to sleep with her handmaid, which was Hagar. And Abraham said, okay. And he did it. See, let me tell you something. See, I heard a man of God say, anytime you have an Ishmael, you're going to have to change the diapers. So what I'm telling you is anything, if God tells you something, his long suffering is not to be confused with his inability to perform it. So Abraham go to uh, God and said, God, do it through Ishmael. And God said, I don't think so. Let me tell you something, family. When God tells you you're going to do something, he's going to do it. Yeah. See, but if you come, the word of God said in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, there is a way that seems right to, to me, but the end is going to be the way of death. Whatever God tell you, that's what he's going to do. See? And God said, no. Come on, let's pick it up right here. Verse number 19. Then God said to him, no. How many of y'all know when God said no, it means no. See, your no don't mean nothing. 
You tell your kid, no, 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 baby, no, 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 no. My mom back in the day said, baby, don't do that. Your next thing going to be a look, or next thing they're going to have to pull her off of you. <laughs> See, your no don't mean nothing. Watch this here. And God said, no, Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son, and you should call his name what? Isaac. Isaac means laughter. I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his descendants after him. So what I'm saying is, God said, no, that ain't what I promise you. See, a lot of times, let me give you an example, family. I just told you earlier, somebody called me, a good, reliable source said, won't you come past the church back in your hometown, got 5,000 members? I told them, no. That ain't what God said. That ain't what God promised me. You got to be in the right place at the, at the right time, and you got to do what God tells you to do. See, that look attractive, it didn't even look attractive to me because I know the voice of God. Why would I get this far and about to step into my promised land and miss it? So I told them, I ain't, I ain't really tell them no. I said, no. <laughs> you old. See, God's long suffering is, is, is God's long suffering not to be confused in the building. Why? Because sometimes you got to grow up for the promise. You're not ready for the promise. I see people, I said, I'm one. I told you last week, I got married before my time, my first wife. I wasn't ready. See, a lot of you guys, you don't want to raise your hand, but you weren't ready either. A lot of you guys weren't ready for the promotion that you got. You weren't ready for the open door. Why? Because, let me tell you something, I learned years ago, God told me as a, as a baby Christian, when he first called me into the ministry, he said, Terry, I'm more concerned about your character than I am where I'm taking you. See, because your anointing, your gift, I have a gift. When he called me, I have a gift to preach and to teach. Then the gifts and calling are without repentance. See, what well, God is not an Indian giver. So his, his gifts are without repentance. But watch this here. When he called me, I was anointed. But he said, now let's take some years to work on your character. Because your, your, your character, your anointing, your gift will get you there, but your character will keep you there. See? So God worried more worried about the fruit of the Spirit in your life than about the anointing on your life. Because if he gave some of you guys something too soon, you know you'll mess it up. Let's go to number three. Number three. Number three. Don't let others idly talk you out of your, your faith. Go to Acts chapter number 22. Don't let others idly talk you out of your faith. Most of y'all believe in what mama them say or somebody else say than God. See, don't let others idly talk you out of your faith, especially when God to talk to you. Paul said something very interesting in the book of Galatians chapter number one. What did Paul say? <clears throat> Paul said, when God spoke to me, I didn't confer with flesh and blood. Let me tell you something. That's where I know, I know people ain't heard the voice of God. When you hear the voice of God, the Bible says it's, like it's like many waters. When you hear God speak to you, Paul said, I ain't talking to man to confer, uh, conferring what God told me. Now, I want to show you something. This is, this, this is something that God showed me. Will I tell you turn? Amen. Acts chapter 22. This is Paul, one of Paul's accounts when he was on the road to Damascus. And I want for you to see this here. If you're there, say amen. Look at verse, look at chapter 22. Let's pick it up in verse number one. He said, brethren and fathers, hear my defense before you now. When they heard that he spoke to them in the Hebrew language, they kept them more silent. Then he said, I am indeed a Hebrew. I am indeed a Jew born in Tarsus of Caesarea, brought up in the city at the feet of Gamaliel, taught according to the strictest of the father's law and zealous toward God as you are all today. I persecuted the way. In other words, he said, I persecuted the church. Watch this here. Death, binding and delivering to prison, both men and women, as also the high priest bears me witness and all the counsel of the elders, from whom I also received letters to the brethren, went to Damascus to bring change, even those who were there to Jerusalem to be punished. But now it what, family? Happened as I journeyed. Let me tell you something. Ain't nothing going to happen in your life if you're, not, if you're not going nowhere. He says, I journeyed, it happened. And I came near Damascus about noon. 
Suddenly, a great light from heaven shone around me, and I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you what? Persecute me. So I answered and said, Who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. Those who were with me, indeed, they saw what, family? The light and were afraid. But they did not hear the what? The voice of him who spoke to me. Now, everybody look at me. He said, don't let others idly talk you out of your faith. 17 years ago, I'm sitting on the couch in Memphis, Tennessee. We were living in Midtown. My, we had just had Maddie, my baby girl. She's 17 right now. I'm sitting on the couch. I'm fasting one Sunday evening because the church I was in, we was fasting the whole year, and everybody had to participate in the fast. So they called me. They said, they said Terry, we got every part of the fast covered, but one part, which on Sunday from 3 to 12, why people don't want to fast from 3 to 12? When you got a church, soon we got a church, all you guys going to eat. So I was zealous for the things of God. I said, I'll take it. So every Sunday, I would run out of church because I, I was a car salesman, and I would go eat fast because at 3 o'clock, I had to shut that thing off from 3 to 12. But God honored my sacrifice because I did it out of a pure heart, right? So I said, I'll take the fast. So one Sunday night, that's the only thing I hate. I didn't write it down. In April of two, 1998, I'm sitting on the couch. and went out with Maddie, with a friend of her. And then all of a sudden, I turned the television off. I'm sitting there. I'm fasting, and I'm quiet. And out of my spirit, I hear, heard, fresh start, new beginnings. I knew God had spoke to me. An hour later, an hour, hour and a half, two hours later, Linda come home. Soon she put matter down. I run in as a baby. God spoke to me. She said, what did he say? I said, fresh start, new beginning. We never forgot that. But watch this here, family. Watch this. Here. That's 17 years ago. I've been through hell the last 17 years. But watch this here. I heard the voice. She didn't hear it. I'm telling you, when God speaks to you, now she see the light, but she didn't hear the voice. That's why I'm able to stand above all things. See, that's why when people try to talk me out of what God promised me, it's too late. Yeah. See, a lot of people, see, I heard the voice. You see the light. Yeah. Let me tell you something, family. If you don't hear God's voice, they're going to be able to talk you off of it. See, I've been through hell the last 17 years. But the Bible told me, having done all to stand, he said, stand. He said, Terry, this, this, light, this light affliction that you're going through, it's going to be worth it, my friend. He said, there's many witnesses that have gone before you. Look how I brought them through, and you see the end. That's why, let me tell you something, fam. Let me tell you something. That's what Paul said. He said, he said they saw the light, and they was blinded by the light. But they didn't hear the voice. I'm going to tell you something. God is talking to somebody as I speak right now. And it's going to take that voice of God to sustain you. See, that's why nobody can talk me out of what God promised me. I heard the voice. Anybody that's never heard the voice of God before, why would you let somebody talk you out of it? See? Let me tell you something, baby. Okay, let's go with that. Galatians, I'm, I'm ready now. Galatians chapter number one. I'm ready now. Galatians chapter number one. And see, my wife and I, we heard that voice, and we were baby Christians. And then over time, it took me 12 years to get the revelation. I still don't have the manifestation, but I got the revelation. And Paul said, we go up by revelation. See, I heard the voice of God. That's why you can't talk me out of it. And see, let me tell you something else I learned. When Elizabeth got pregnant by the Holy Spirit, the Bible says she went in seclusion for five, six months. She didn't tell nobody. Let me tell you something, family. When God speaks to you, sometimes you better let that thing take root before you tell somebody. And then when, the, then when Mary was, was, uh, got a uh, 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 seed dropped in her by the Holy Spirit and they met, the babies leaped in them. And when I talk to somebody who got a baby in them, they always leaping around me. Why? Because they heard the supernatural. If you ain't jumping around me, it's because you ain't heard nothing. See? When the supernatural meet the supernatural, they know what's happening. See, a lot of people, they see the light, but they don't hear the voice. 
That's why the word of God said in Revelation chapter 2, verse number 7, he who has a ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The Spirit is talking to the church right now. See, why would I let you talk me out of the supernatural? God showed me something. See, the same God who spoke to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and David, and Solomon, and Jacob, he spoke to your boy here. And family, he'll speak to you too. See, and that's what Paul said in Galatians chapter number one. Watch this here, family. If you're there, say amen. amen. And Galatians chapter number one, watch this here. Let's pick it up in verse number, let's pick it up in verse 15, because I want you to see this. I mean, Galatians 1, 15. <coughs> but when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's what? Womb, and called me through his grace. Let me tell you something. I came through my mama. I ain't come from my mama. Amen. That's just a little nugget right there. <laughs> Watch this here, family. To reveal his son in me, somebody say Jesus. Jesus. That I may preach him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately confer with flesh and blood, baby. I heard the voice of God. The Bible said they saw the light, but they didn't hear the voice. Let me tell you something, what Isaiah said, not Isaiah, Elijah said in, uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, 1 Kings chapter number 18. The Bible said there was a hurricane, there was a tornado, there was a windstorm, but when he heard that still, small voice, the Bible said he wrapped his face in it. When you hear the voice of God, you're going to wrap your whole life up in it. That's when I know you ain't heard from God, you ain't wrapped your life up in it. That's why Jesus said, whoever come to me, you got to deny yourself, take up your cross, and you follow. When you, it's a still, the Bible said, he said, it's a, it's a silent, it's a quiet whisper. Yes. Let me tell you how powerful God is. All God got to do is whisper something to you. And your whole generation change in your life. And why would you let somebody talk you out of it? What you got to lose? And he asked you to do one thing, believe him. Believe him. See, now go to Genesis, go, to, uh, go back to Acts, go to 26 this time. Go to Acts 26. Watch this here, family, Acts 26. Paul said, they saw the light, but they ain't hear the voice. Baby, you ain't hear what God told me. I heard God's voice. I know what he said. See, I know, I heard it. How you going to talk me out of the supernatural? How you going to talk me out of what God spoke to me? How you say, Pastor, how you know if God spoke to you? Number one, like Isaiah, uh, uh, Jeremiah said, it's like fire shut up in your bone. You, you can't hold it back. Number two, it's something that you can't do. Right. It's supernatural. See, it's crazy. See, come on, why take your turn? Acts chapter number 26. Watch this here, family. Acts chapter number 26. Watch Paul. Paul said, Acts chapter 26, let's pick it up in verse number 12. Acts 26, 12, if you're there, Paul defending himself again. See, anytime God speaks to you, you're going to have to defend yourself. You have to defend yourself. The Bible said, the word of God said in Psalms 105, verse number 19, the word going to prove you true. The word going to prove you true. It's going to prove all your critics true. But watch Paul defending himself. Watch it before the king. Uh, verse number 12, while thus occupy as I journey to Damascus, with the authority and commission from the chief priest. At midday, O king, along the road I saw a light from heaven brighter than the sun shining around me and those who journey with me. It's folks right with you, sitting right beside you in church, but God's speaking to you as I speak right now. And when, he, and when we had all fallen to the ground, I heard a what, family? A voice speaking to me, saying, in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the gold. So I said, who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Rise, stand on your feet, for I appear to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both of the things which you have seen and of the things which I will yet reveal to you. I will deliver you from the Jewish people, as well as from the Gentiles, to those whom I now send you. To open, their, uh, to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sin and inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Therefore, King Agrippa, 
I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus and Jerusalem and through all the region of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they shall repent, turn to God, and do works befitting repentance. For this reason, the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. You know when you hear from God, they're going to try to kill you. Therefore, having obtained help from God, to this day I stand witness both to small and great, saying no other thing than those which the prophets and Moses said would come, that the Christ would suffer, he would be first to rise from the dead, will proclaim light to the Jewish people and to the Gentiles. Now as he thus made his defense, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, you are beside yourself. Much learning, what's it, is driving you. That's how you know you heard from God. They think you crazy. They think you mad. But he said, I am not mad or angry or crazy, most noble Festus, but speak the words of what, family? And reason. Remember I told you, I ain't, I, ain't out of, I ain't out of my mind, I'm out of your mind. Festus stand up and said, Paul, much learning is driving you mad, driving you crazy. Why? Because I heard from God. Noah heard from God. Build a boat, right? And then I'm going to send rain. Noah had never seen rain, right? So they laughed at Noah. Noah built that on that boat, anybody know how long? For 120 years. How would you like to build on something you ain't never seen rain? But why would Noah able to build on that boat? Because he heard the voice. Let me tell you something, family. One of the strongest revelations that I ever, Bobby, you better show me a clock because I keep preaching for three hours. Oh, there it is up there, okay. Everybody look at me, everybody look at me. Let me tell you one of the strongest revelations I didn't got the last five years. A man of God taught me from Kenya, Bishop David Oyedipo. He told me in the book of Hebrews, how do faith come? How do faith come? Now I'm going to give you one of the strongest revelations I got in the last five years. Faith come by what? And hearing by? But faith is stronger than that. When he told me, he told me, he said, no, faith is stronger than that. That's true. Faith does, that's the word. Faith come by and hearing by, but catch this revelation. Faith come primarily by hearing the voice of God. Let me see if we can catch that. When you look at the Hebrews of faith in Hebrews chapter number 11, who talked to Noah? God himself. Who talked to Abraham? God himself. Who, how did Joseph see that dream? See, faith come by hearing. And hearing by, but faith primarily come by hearing the voice of, when you hear God, it changes everything. He said, Terry, that's why we said faith come by hearing, hearing by word. No, babe, you need to hear God for yourself. You need to have your own personal relationship with God. So when that man of God taught me that, he said, because the church is full of people hearing faith every week. Ain't nothing changed. It's impossible to hear from God and nothing change in your life. When you, every man or woman of God heard from God in this book, they turn the world upside down. When you hear from God, yeah, faith come by hearing, but faith primarily come from hearing God. When I heard from God, fam, it changed my life. I just, the same God who, who spoke the stars, the moon, the sun, the firmness, everything in place, spoke here to your boy. You need to hear for God for yourself. That's why others won't idly talk you out of your faith. Paul said they saw the light, but they didn't hear the voice. I ain't mad. And he said, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. See, that's why, that's why I'm able to stand like I stand, because I believe God. See, one of the things that I heard, go to 1 Samuel chapter number 3. Then God started confirming that word to me through other scriptures. This was when the prophet Samuel first heard God. I'm in 1 Samuel chapter number 3. Watch this here, family. You have a right to hear from God. Because you hear on the sign where Paul said, God who separated me from my mother's womb 
and call me into his grace. You have a right to hear from God. Now, God, what's my assignment? I'm not here by accident. Why am I here in the earth? You need to hear from God. <coughs> Why? Because you don't want to mess around and leave here and you ain't done nothing. But got to go watch because you put 37 years on a job. Baby, you're not here for a job. You're here on a sign. Amen. Amen. A lot of here, you know what I'm saying? We don't even know whether or not the government is going to be able to pay us our retirement. And then simply say every week, uh, uh, quote, what is it, uh, uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, my God going to supply all my needs according to the glory. Barack, y'all better do the right thing over there in the White House. <laughs> Baby, you need to get out the White House and get in God's house. You're in the kingdom now. See, the kingdom of this world should become the kingdoms of our God. See, now watch this here, family. Watch this here. The prophet Samuel, hear from God. Are you ready? I'm in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse number 1. If you're there, say amen. amen. Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before the priest Eli. And the word of the Lord was rad in those days. There was no widespread revelation. And it came to pass at that time, while Eli was lying down his plate, his eyes, Eli was an old man, had begun to grow so dim that he could not see. And before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord, where the ark of the Lord, that's the presence of the Lord was, while Samuel was lying down. Samuel, everybody look at me. Samuel was lying down in the presence of the Lord. He's a little boy. Hannah, his mama, took him to the temple as a little kid. He hung out where the ark of the covenant was. He, lay, he was sleeping with it every day. He was lying down in the presence of the Lord day in and day out. But now watch this here, family. Watch this here. Watch this here. Verse 3, before the lamp of God went down the tabernacle of the Lord where the ark of the Ark of God was while Samuel lying down. Verse 4, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I, and he ran to who? Eli, and said, Here am I, for you called me. And Eli said, I did not call you. Lie down again. And he went and laid down before. Then the Lord yet called what? Again, Samuel. So Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for you called me. And he said, Boy, quit waking me up. And he answered, I did not call you, my son, lie down again. Verse 7, now Samuel did not yet know who? The Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel, what's the word? Again. How many times? The third time. So he arose and went to Eli and said, here am I, for, for you did call me. Then Eli proceeded that the Lord did what? Had called the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, go lie down. And it should be, if he called you, you must say, speak, Lord, for your servant what? Here. So Samuel went and laid down in his place. First of all, you got to be in your place before God called you. Say anything. Let me tell you, God ain't going to speak to you out of your place. If you out of place, know what God's going to tell you. Go over there and get in your place. You know what God's going to tell an unbeliever? Get born again. Let me tell you something, family. Everybody look at me. God's the God of order. If you're supposed to be in one church and you in this church or another church, you out of place. Why would God speak to you? You know what he's going to tell you? I told you to go over there to the first start in the beginning. I told you to go to World Changes. I told you to go to this church. I told you need to be in your place. I told you to take this job. I told you. See, you, he ain't going to speak to you. He's the God of order. If he tells you something out of your place, that's out of order for him. He's not going, he's holy. He's pure. See, first of all, you have to be in your, there's a set place for you. First Corinthians chapter uh, 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 14, verse 18, tell them that. God called, God set people as it pleases him. First Corinthians 12, 18. God sets the people as it pleases him. A lot of people choose churches. God has to choose a church for you. You come in and say, God, I don't like that man. It got nothing to do with that man. It got something to do with what he's teaching. I ain't going to go to that church. All they do is want your money. <laughs> See, the word of God said in 1 Corinthians 12, 18, God sets the people as it pleases him. See, God is in control. He tells you what to do, but he ain't going to make you. See, if God had spoken something to you, and you hadn't done it, 
He ain't going to give you another word 100 years from now till you go back and do what he told you 100 years ago. So watch this here, family. Verse number 10. Now the Lord came and stood, watch this here, and called at other time, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, said, speak for your servant what? Samuel never had lived again. He heard God for himself. Now, a lot of us have never heard God for ourselves. See, now Samuel became the prophet of the nation. See, when you hear God, you don't let other idols talk you out of your faith. See, you have to be able to hear God, watch this here, family, for yourself. And that happened to me. This was Samuel. This happened to me in April of 1998. And that's why, like Paul said, flesh and blood, I ain't confer with flesh and blood. I ain't going to run to try to get you to confirm what God spoke to me. Baby, God don't need your confirmation. What we said, God has spoken. Why well, I said, I said, God said it. I believe it. That's settled. We need to believe that. Because we're always going somewhere trying to get confirmation. You think God will do that? You think that? See, that's doubt. That's doubt, see? So when God speaks, see, you don't need to nobody else to confer. Watch this here, family. Go to Numbers chapter number 11. Put number four up there. Number four. Remembering Numbers chapter number numbers 11. Numbers chapter number 11. Remember the magnitude of your situation is not a factor with God. The magnitude of your situation is not a factor with God. Numbers chapter number 11. Let me know when you get there. Numbers chapter number 11. If you're there, say amen. Now, remembering that the magnitude of your situation is not a factor with God. Now, let me ask you a question, family. Everybody look at me. Let me teach you something. The greatest miracle in the Bible, don't say nothing first lady, because I teach all the time at home, we talk. The greatest miracle in the Bible, somebody tell me what it was. Anybody know what it was? The great, who said, I heard over here. What was it? Bernard, high five. The greatest miracle in the Bible is the resurrection. High five, man of God. The greatest miracle in the Bible is the resurrection. Which I'll tell you what you do, you raise somebody from the dead. The greatest miracle in the Bible is the what? The resurrection. See, that's the greatest miracle. Now, I want to show you something. God performed 10 miracles through Moses. If God performed 10 miracles through you, you think that you would believe God. Come on, family. I'm in Egypt now. When God bring the children of Israel out of Egypt, get ready to take them to the promised land, God performed how many miracles? 10. Flies. Locusts, turn the Nile into blood. Come on. Frogs, lights, boars, killed the first, last one, when he killed the first one, all Egypt, Pharaoh said, y'all need to get up out of here. He performed how many miracles? But the greatest miracle in the Bible is the the resurrection. Raise somebody from the dead. Now, here a man of God, Moses. God said Moses was the most humble man on the earth. That's my prophet. Now here Moses, they had to, they coming out, they're in the wilderness. We're going to pick this store up with the children of Israel. They're hungry now. So God gave them manna. Now they have a taste for meat. They want meat. They're complaining. They're murmuring. They complain to God. God brought them out of slavery. Now they're in the wilderness complaining. See, now we're going to pick the store up. I want you to see this here because remember the magnitude of your situation is not a fact of God. Let me tell you something, family. You can take your situation right now and multiply it by 10,000, and God, it ain't nothing for God. Now, I want you to see this story right here. Well, I tell you, Numbers chapter number what? 11, and I want to pick it up in verse number, let me see where I want to pick it up at. Let's pick it up in verse number 18, Numbers 11, 18. If you're there, say amen. Did he, now, he tell them, he said, then you should say to the people, God told Moses, consecrate yourself for tomorrow, and you should eat meat. For you have wept. That word wept means you complain. God hate complain. You complain in the hearing of the Lord, saying, Will you give us meat to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. How many of y'all know that was a lie? They groaned and complained about being in slavery. 
He said, watch this. He said, for it was well with us in Egypt. You had well with you in slavery. Watch this. Therefore the Lord will give you meat and you should eat. And you should eat not one day, nor two days, nor five days, nor ten days, nor twenty days. For a whole what family? A whole month until it comes out of your... No. You're going to get tired of eating sirloin steak, real, prime real. He said, you're going to get tired of eating chicken wings. Watch this here. A whole month until it comes out of your nostrils because, and become loathsome to you because you have despised the Lord who is among you and have wept or complained before him, said, why did we ever come out of Egypt? In other words, God, why did you ever deliver me out of my situation? Watch this, family. And the Lord said, the people whom I am among, uh, Moses said, the people whom I am among are 600,000 what? Men. Okay, everybody look at me. You got 600,000 what? Men. Men. Every man has a wife. We're just going to, just a small number. They give you how many? 1.2 million. Back in the day, they used to have 12, 15 kids. Today, y'all have one or two. Three and shut that thing down. So we're going to get everybody at least one. Now you have how many? 1.8. But you know them folks had a, Jacob had 12. That's just the son, not his daughters. You got 3 million people out there. And God said, for a whole month, I'm going to give them enough chicken wings. It's going to come out their nose. Watch the man of God. Come on, family, watch the man of God. Watch this here. Verse 21, Moses said, the people whom I am among are 600,000 men on foot. Yet you say, I will give them meat that they may eat for a whole month? He said, Moses says, shall flocks and herds be slaughtered for them to provide for them? Or should all the fish or the sea be gathered together for them to provide enough for them? Moses, now, what, what is Moses saying to God? How are you going to do this? You're going to empty the sea out? And God just performed how many miracles with Moses? Ten. Ten. But look what God told Moses, verse 23. And the Lord said to Moses, has the Lord's arm been? Boy, that's a bad boy right there, man. Fam, let me tell you something. When God tells you something, what are you going to do, Ken? He going to do it. Moses, he didn't perform how many miracles? And he said, how are you going to do this? And God, let me tell you something. Everybody look at me. Ain't your situation ain't nothing to God. And God said, Moses, has my arm, in other words, the word changes, is there anything? God said, Moses, you think Moses, he didn't perform all these miracles to split the Red Sea and walk through it. You know, you ain't just walk, you walk through that thing. <laughs> see, a lot of y'all, y'all too pretty, to, too pretty. Y'all think people that walk through going, thank you, Jesus. Man, them folks were walking through that thing. When God bring you through something, come on, family. How you act? You just, oh, pray the Lord. Man, you getting your shout up in that thing, man. You know them folk coming out the hood, man. Them folk gangster walking and everything through that. But hey, hey, but watch this here, family. God then did all that. Look at verse 22 shall flocks and herbs and slaughter be for them to provide enough food for them or should the fish of the sea be gathered together for them to provide enough and the Lord said to Moses has the Lord arm been short now you shall come on now you shall whether what I say will happen to you or not I'm done he said I he said now you're gonna see what I spoke gonna come to pass baby the Bible said God calls a wind Quail start coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west. What is God telling me? He said, tell them, your situation ain't too hard for God. I don't care how much you owe. Your credit card. I don't care what your body's going through right now. I don't care what you're going through in your marriage. I don't care how your children are acting right now. I don't care what they're coming. Is there anything? And God said, Moses, he's talking to the man of God. Now you're going to see that what I said is going to come to pass. Amen. Amen. 
Let me tell you something, family. Remember the magnitude of your situation. It ain't no big deal to God. Second Kings, let's read one more scripture. We're done. Second Kings 3.18, I'm just going to read the nugget on this here, and we're done with that. Well, I want you to see what Second Kings 3.18 said. Some of y'all have sneaked over there. That's what I hate to put. So I don't like to put my, my uh, stuff on the skip. Y'all try to get ahead of me. Second Kings chapter number 3. This is when God, God filled all the valleys up with water in the desert. Now, 2 Kings 3.18, watch it. And they said, you're in the desert, and there ain't going to rain, there ain't going to be no wind, but God going to fill all. He said, dig ditches, and I'm going to fill them up with water. Watch what God said to them. The prophet said to him, Elijah said to him, verse 18. I'm in 2 Kings 3.18. Y'all read it? No, let's, read, let's start at uh, verse 17. Let's start at verse 15. But now bring me a musician. Then it happened when the musician played that the hand of the Lord came upon him, Elisha. And he said, thus said the Lord. Thus said who? The Lord. the Lord. Make this valley full of ditches. For thus said the Lord, you should not see wind nor see rain. Yet the valley should be filled with what? Water so that you and your cattle and your animals may drink. And this is a... In the sight of the Lord. In other words, one trend, they said, this ain't no big deal for God. Hallelujah. Family, what you're going through ain't nothing hard for God. He said, this is a simple matter for God. That's a word to somebody today. Babe, I don't care what you're going through. This ain't no big, we talking about God. You think what you're going through is hard for God? He said, this is a simple matter. I remember, close your Bible, I'm done. I remember my man of God told me years ago, God used him to, to confirm what he spoke in my life. And i never forget what he told me. He said, Terry, this was 17 years ago. He said, this ain't nothing hard for God. I, know, I, hadn't, I, hadn't, I didn't know that scripture. Family, God said, if I speak it, I would never tell you something I'm not going to do. You hear what I just said? Like my kids. I don't tell T.J. Maddox something I'm not going to do. And I'm a man. I can come off my word. But God said, Terry, he said, if I told you something, I'm going to do it. This ain't a hard thing. Everybody snapped your fingers. That's how hard it is for God. I don't care how big, you can put all y'all situations together and God can just do this here and it's over. Ain't no hard, speak one, speak one word to one person and your whole life change. He said, man, and I've been, I've been with that word for the last 10 years. He said, this ain't no big deal for me. The Bible said, watch this here, don't be weary. And well doing, you gonna reap. If you, that's the key right there. Snap your finger again. That's how hard it is for God. How many of y'all believe that? Amen. Give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. Family, this ain't no big thing for God. You understand? He said, this ain't hard. One, one last thing, family. Just, this, I want everybody to look at me. This is the image I want y'all to see. When God opened up my Red Sea, pastor coming through. I, I'm joking, baby. I ain't just, I'm telling you right now. I'm joking. You know, I'm, I promise you, I'm, <laughs> hey, hey, I ain't just going through, thank you, Lord, hallelujah, baby, I'm getting my, man, me and my whole family, pray the Lord. Hello, family, I'm Pastor Terry Stobbs of Fresh God New Beginning Christian Church. I want to thank you for tuning in to Streaming Live. We're here every week at 10 a.m. Spread the word to your family and your friends. Now, family, listen to me. I just don't teach the word just to be teaching. I want for you to win in life. We serve a God that is alive and powerful and sharper than the two-edged sword. I'm going to tell you something that God shared with me many years ago i would never forget. It comes from Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man he should repent. If God said it, he'll do it. If God promised it, he'll bring it to pass. Be a doer of the word and not just a hearer. Now, I need your help. I want for you to sow into the ministry. I want for you to go to our website, which is fsnbcc.org, and click on to the donate button. Just click the button, or there's an address right below on the screen. Sow into the ministry. Fresh start, new beginning is good ground. Now, I want to leave you with this. I want to leave you with 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Whoever's in Christ is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become a fresh start, a new beginning. 
Have a great week. See you next week, same time.